Recently, I've been using five different AI tools, and I think you're going to find some of these really useful. The very first one I want to show you is called Flipner AI. It's a note taking app, but it will take voice notes or text notes and then with one click summarize them into a finished article or a blog post. Let me show you this in action. This is the platform. Once you sign in, I'm using just a free version here, but you could create these text columns and they could be about a specific topic. So I'll create this one right here and then you'll add these little snippets with snippets. You could do live audio and record and they have a really nice mobile interface to you. So you could do this on the go. And then when it gets recorded, this is how I recorded this one. It will just appear. It will transcribe it and it will appear as text. And then as you add more snippets, depending on which notes you're taking, you could go ahead and add text snippets too, and just paste in text. You could also upload audio files like an MP3 file you have on your phone. This requires the paid upgrade. And you could also type in subtitles here or paste subtitles and it will appear like this. Now, what's great about this is after you take all your notes, I take ton of notes, usually in a notes app, it's really all over the place. This way, all I have to do is come to this actions tab right here. And then I could choose a writing style. So simple and clear is the default, but they have different options available. And then all you have to do is press summarize over here. And it's going to take not only the text files that you put here, the audio files that you uploaded or recorded, it's going to take all of that text and it's going to create a really nice summary over here. And then you could go ahead and rewrite it too, if you don't like the output. So this is a fantastic way to organize all your thoughts with voice or with text and then summarize them quickly. Now, this next one is called Typeset IO. They have a ton of different tools here, but it's mainly a writing tool. So all in one AI tool for students and researchers. And all you have to do is type in a topic and it will pull in things from actual research papers with really good citations. So I'll just click one of these examples they have over here. So it will go ahead and do the research and you have a drop down over here. So I'm choosing paper, but they have concepts and you could choose from your own library, which I'll show you in a second, your own PDFs. But look how nice this is. It gave us this little snippet from five different research papers and it lists the papers down here. So this one is one of the papers. I could go ahead and chat with this paper and it's going to give me some options for follow up questions related to this paper. And if I click on them, it creates a prompt for me and it will go to work and it will pull in more information from this paper. So it's not just like chat GPT and it's not just using its knowledge base to pull in information and give you a whole paper. This is a great writing assistant, especially for researchers and students that need to have these type of citations. But one of the main ways I like to use it is right here, chat with a PDF, or you could go to my library tab and upload multiple different PDFs to it. So I, I uploaded this Gemini prompting guide from Google and I just had a conversation with it. So it generated a summary for me and this is a pretty long document. So a lot of times just to speed up the process of my research, I use these type of models to get a quick summary. A lot of times I'll do this in chat GPT, but this one is really designed to help you do exactly this chat with your own PDFs. And it makes it really easy to come up with follow up prompts as well. Right here, I got suggestions on all these different prompts. So I could say find related papers to this. And because this has that big knowledge base and that big resource of research papers, it might find something that's really relevant that I might not find inside of chat GPT. And here are some options. There we go. Let's check that out. Prompt engineering phone chat GPT. There we go. We got something else we could use in our research. And I've been using the free version of this in this video, but they do have some paid upgrades. Okay, the next one on the list is a chatbot arena where you could use all the top chatbots and compare them side by side. And a lot of people that are really deep into AI have been using the leaderboard right here for a long time to see which chatbot or which large language model is number one right now. Right now, Gemini 1.5 Pro is actually number one. It's beating ChatGPT 4.0, it's beating Claude 3.5 Sonnet, and those are tied right now. Wow, ChatGPT Mini is actually tied with Claude 3.5 Sonnet. And you could see all kinds of large language models that you probably never heard of on this list too. And you could try them all on this platform. But I love this leaderboard. Another page here is this side by side arena. That's really nice. So on the left side, you could choose from the drop down. So this is a nice way to use Gemini 1.5 Pro. Now, this is a little bit limited because it's a totally free website. You can't even log in. It's not going to remember your chats but it is free to use. And then you would use another one. Let's say if I wanted to compare 
Claude 3.5 Sonnet and then give it a prompt right here. And as you can see right here, a lot of people are using Gemini 1.5 Pro, so it's not letting me do it right now. There's another page I'll show you in a second, but right now I can't use it, but I did create a table using Claude 3.5 Sonnet here inside of this chatbot arena. And I could decide to give it a rating too. If I wanna say A is better, B is better, it's a tie. In this case, well, we didn't have one to rate, but this is also another really interesting page. This very first icon right here, it doesn't tell you which model is choosing. It's gonna choose it after you give it a prompt. But as soon as you give it a prompt, it's choosing a model on the left side and it's choosing another model on the right side. And then it's gonna ask you which one is better. And then as soon as you give it a rating here, it's gonna tell you which one is used. So it's using GPT-40 versus GPT-4 Turbo. In this case, the left side was better. And they just added a brand new option here where you could actually add your own images and interact with images. So I have this image right here. Let me go ahead and upload it. And I'm gonna ask, what is this? Again, it's gonna use two large language models, one on the left side, one on the right side. Now they both did an accurate job. I think the right side is a little bit more complete here. So I could go ahead and give it a rating. And it looks like Gemini was the winner here. Haiku was on the left side. And as you could see, all these different tabs are pretty useful. And sometimes they do hit their limit because obviously you're using a free website, but very interesting comparison to test out two different answers. And I use this for very practical application, not just a leaderboard, but I do check this leaderboard almost every single day. Okay, this is a chatbot. This is a French company that makes a large language model called Mistral Large. And they just recently released the second version of that called Mistral Large 2. And you could use it on this website and it's free to use because it's just an open source model. Now this one I ran against the head to head test specifically trying to do a coding task that I never got a large language model to do properly. So if you've seen any of my tests, Every time I've tried any large language models, it cannot do a checkers game with all the functionality of a checkers game. So I tried it with this one, and this is the code that it gave me. This is the first try that it gave me the checkers game. Let's see if it works. So I choose this one. That's correct. Let's see if it's going to take a piece. Let's go this way. Let's see. Wow. This is the very first time I got a functioning checkers game in the very first try, I actually never got a functioning checkers game, even in 10 tries, using Claude 3.5 Sonnet, using ChatGPT, using Gemini. None of them gave me a functioning checkers game, and this is working exactly as it should. So I tried to see if it could do a game of chess, far more complicated than checkers. Let's see how far we got there. Okay, you gave me the code for the game of chess, and it looks like it's pretty extensive here. Let me go ahead and copy this over. Okay, it doesn't look so bad. All right, the moves are correct. This pawn moves two, it's black's turn. Okay, pawn can't go left or right, but it can go this way. Not bad, let's see. Oh, it could take the piece. Let's see if some of these other pieces move right. Okay, I could go this way, I could go this way. That makes sense. What about the, okay. Wow, this is a huge leap, even from Claw 3.5 Sonnet, which is what I've been using mostly. This is doing things I didn't even consider trying just because it couldn't even make checkers work. Chess is as complex of a game as you could get, right? And this kind of made it very quickly. Now, the next one I wanted to show you is a brand new update that came out inside of Runway Gen 3. So Runway Gen 3, if you haven't used it yet, it turns the text prompt into a video. And it's really good. It's probably the leading text to video generator right now. But this new update lets you drop in an image to use that as your prompt instead of a text prompt. So before we could only do a text prompt, this option was available before too in Gen 2. We've been using it quite often. And what we do is we create our image somewhere else, typically inside of Midjourney, and then we drop it in here. So let me show you an example of how it turns out. Okay, so here's an image that we got right out of Midjourney. And it also lets you decide if this is gonna be the first frame, so this is the starting point of your video, or if it's gonna be the very last frame, does your video end with this? So if I choose last frame, the horse is probably gonna start out of frame, come in and end here. I usually like to choose first frame, so this is the starting point, and then have the horse move forward. And then all you have to do is generate a video. You could do a five or 10 second video and press generate. There's no other settings you have to change, which is really, really nice. This is a paid platform. So this is based on credits. 
I believe a 10 second clip right now takes about 100 credits. I have about 3000 left with the middle plan that I have here. And I'll go ahead and generate this. Okay, here's the video I got. Wow, that just looks incredible. I mean, the horse does get a little bit shiny here, <laughs> but the movement, the way the water is moving, this was with no prompt. This was just with that image as a starting point. I didn't say anything about camera movement, which you can, you can combine image with a little bit of text like zoom in or do a dolly move, any type of uh, cinematic explanation in the prompt, you could do that. But this turned out really, really good. I haven't had really great luck with Gen 3 just because it overdoes everything. It overdoes the animation. So we still use Gen 2 quite often because it's a lot more subtle and I don't think text to video gen is quite there yet to be able to do these type of movements. But with the image prompt, it's getting really, really good. And I recently also made a video showing you how to turn any screenshot into a functioning app using Claude 3.5 Sonnet. You could share that with other people too. So I'll link that video here and I'll see you on the next one.